Hello, happy hackers. This morning I woke up and I put the coffee beans in my coffee maker in the place where the water goes. It was a nice reminder that I'm not a robot. After yesterday's video, I got an email from Jeff and I feel like I should read it with boxing gloves, but I don't have any. He said he had to pause after watching yesterday's video about Jolly Rogers cookbook as he wasn't familiar with it, but he was active during the 1994 bulletin board system scene. And he did end up finding it over at textfiles.com, which is an awesome place from one of our friends. And it is simply a rebranded version of the anarchist cookbook with a new name. So here's the thing, Jeff, I actually did learn that years ago and I was surprised, but at the same time, I've always continued to call it the Jolly Rogers Cookbook just because that's what I always knew it as when I was a little kid on bulletin board systems. I'm also all too familiar with the practice. There's countless examples through history and I can share one from my own personal experience. If I'm honest, I don't let it get under my skin, but it does bug me when people call the USB rubber ducky a bad USB as if the latter came first. The USB rubber ducky was our crazy brainchild, cute little poster over there, and it debuted in 2010. The bad USB was a part of a talk at Black Hat in 2014. Now the concept for bad USB was quite extensive and it's never really made the light of day. The material wasn't released, but so many other security researchers were able to recreate some of those concepts. Mostly the USB hit implementation or basically the keystroke injection or USB keyboard part of that. And to be honest, most of the implementations that I've seen over the years have actually used DuckyScript as the de facto language for keystroke injection as well. We developed that and we created a huge community and pioneered the concept and had a large library of attack payloads for it. My guess is the reason you see clones labeled as bad USB rather than USB rubber ducky is for trademarks. At least that's the impression that I've gotten from the likes of Satanic and MG and Kevin Mitnick's of the world who have done Arduino based derivatives. Anyway, back to the email from Jeff. He goes on to talk about how there was the other file that I mentioned from the bulletin board systems back in the mid 90s and that was Secrets of the Little Blue Box. You know, that 1971 Esquire magazine article that introduced the public to the cool concept that is the blue box, the phone freaking device that was made famous by Steve Jobs and Wozniak and Captain Crunch and all the others. Quote, you mentioned the secrets of the little blue box and I've always heard that, but it's always bothered me because when I was 11, well actually it hadn't been published then, I mean this metaphorically, I went to my local library and got access to their archive of Esquire magazine. I found the article in the October 1971 issue and was able to make a photostat of the microfilm. Yep, old school as me. I still have them in my files. The puzzlement is that the actual title of the article is Secrets of the Little Black Box. It did indeed describe the blue box, it just didn't use the name in the title. So for years I've been puzzled by all of these people who quote this article with the wrong title. When I followed your reference and found this Jolly Roger material, I see they reproduced the article appropriately pirated by Jolly Roger, but changed the title. So Jeff, I have scoured the internet and I actually can't find any reference to this named the little black box. I always knew it as the little blue box. Unfortunately, I was too young to take advantage of this kind of thing because most everything had moved on and um, analog trunks were disappearing. I did have a lot of fun with the red box. Maybe we can talk about that another time. Unauthenticated tones are fun, just like unauthenticated keystrokes. So anyway, if you can dig up the old microfilm, that would be amazing. Please share it with us. And I think that's two beautiful examples of uncredited derivatives and collective false memory, I would like to assume, but I can't find any examples of it, so let's see. Now, tomorrow I'm gonna to try to keep this train going and answer the last part of Jeff's email, which has to do with public key encryption and air wrap gapped machines and sneaker nets and secure methods, and I'm gonna uh, try to whip up some bunny script that's gonna demonstrate cool stuff you can do with that. With that said, I'm Darren Kitchen. You can email me, darren.kitchen. You'll find all the info there. Um, yeah, trust your technolust. Domain.com has all of your website needs, from .com and .net to intuitive website builders. Create your online identity with their affordable, reliable tools and even brand yourself with over 300 extensions from .club to .space. Domain.com loves Hack5, which is why you get 15% off domain names, hosting, and email when you use coupon code HACK5. When you think domain names, think Domain.com.